What would your life be like if you stopped doing things that you hated? And you just started making small steps towards the things that lit you up inside? What would happen if you took a big leap towards that dream all at once? These are questions I have been exploring and answering for myself my entire life. And I'm at a point now where I am entering into a new phase of my life. Now I grew up uh, on welfare. I had no father and my mother was uh, a resentful and abusive woman who died an early death. So from the start, I knew I was in this alone. And uh, I grew up uh, without any family support, any emotional support, any financial support. And yet I have lived a pretty amazing life so far. I was very ill as a child and I spent a lot of time in the hospital. And while I was there, um, alone, which was often, I would pray and talk to God. And I would never consider myself a religious person. Um, I've, I've had some experiences that could be classified as religious in nature. Very mystical, uh, very intense experiences. But my relationship uh, with the transcendent, with the big picture, with God and my own innate divinity has been what has allowed me to have hope in my whole life and to follow my dreams fearlessly and keep me out of harm's way. This past year, I took a chance and moved to a remote part of the Canadian wilderness that I once discovered while I was working in uh, forestry many years ago that I loved and knew that I would one day return to on my own terms. And having built an online career for myself, I am able to live anywhere I want that has an internet connection, even if it's not a very good one. <laughs> But I asked God to show me that I would be taken care of if I followed my heart and stayed in service of the highest good. And I received my answer. And I have lived uh, the best year of my life out here. And I've been more productive and more abundant than any other time in my life. And now I feel that it is time for me to move on from this place. I have met everyone that I needed to meet, seen and experienced everything that I needed to, learned all the lessons. And I think I may return here one day, possibly. But for now it's time for me to focus on a few things that I can't do from this location. The one thing you guys probably don't know about me unless you've scoured back really far in my Facebook history, is that I am a certified scuba diver. And swimming is meditation for me. And the water out here in the mountains is freezing cold. So I got back in the water in the city the other day for the first time in over a year. And I just swam laps and dove and that's my meditation and you know after I left my face was sore from smiling and I know that I want to be somewhere where I can swim more often. Another thing is I want to be more around people. My life experiences and my relationship with God and the way I listen to my heart in my life and all of the therapy that I've done and all of the 
the therapy training that I've taken have created in me a person who people tend to gravitate towards when they need that kind of energy in their life. And it's not just about them, it also does a service to me. Uh, being able to give that of myself, uh, it, it, it's a service to me as well. And I have found that these people find me, uh, you know, e even under different circumstances. I sold all of my belongings. Um, I also took three truckloads of things into Goodwill, and I, mean, I don't buy a lot of things. I was really surprised by how many, how much stuff I had. But I sold all of my items in private groups on Facebook, and. I did something that surprised me. I invited the people to my home to come and pick up the items. And I found that welcoming strangers into my home, I could really see their vulnerability and uh, their openness and their desire to connect. Uh, most people who just encounter me casually they don't hit me up with small talk anymore. They start opening up to me out of nowhere. And these people are coming to my home to, uh, you know, under the pretense of buying these items from me that I had for sale. But then they'd end up talking to me about their lives and their journey in this life and their relationships. I had one guy uh, who showed up, his mother-in-law had uh, contacted me and told me he'd be coming to pick up uh, the item and when he showed up you know I, I said oh that's so kind you know to pick something up for your mother-in-law and he said well she's my ex-mother-in-law right and then that story begins and I love observing how each of us weathers our story and our life and how we wear everything that we've been through and the way we are dealing with it. It's fascinating to me. Uh, the other day I spent half an hour blatantly staring at a group of high school students in a library and watching how they all interacted with each other and the things they were talking about and the things they were learning and I was thinking about their lives and I was thinking about you know, my life when I was in high school and I was thinking about the state of humanity and you can look at the big picture and feel desperate and hopeless. Then you can find these little microcosms, these little groups that show you that not all is lost. And there's a lot more going on in this world than most people are aware of on a deeper level. And I'm an idealist. Uh, I want things to be perfectly beautiful and I want to believe in true virtue and I want to have values and morals and ethics that are you know, on a certain level that will never be breached. But one thing I've learned is that there are no good people in this world. We're all a dance between light and dark, sun and shadow. And that's the nature of this world. But there is good in people. And that's worth risking everything for. It strikes me as rather ironic that at a time in my life where I finally have everything that I've wanted in a material sense, and I have you know, more money than I've ever had before. Um, I've really figured out um, what works for me and how to use my tool of choice, which is the internet. I've been making content on the internet for 16 years. I've only figured out how to monetize it in the past five years. But it strikes me as odd that at a time when you know, I, I can have anything, and I can go anywhere, and I can do anything. 
all I want to do is swim and pray and minister to people. You know, just to uh, be there and to provide a mirror for them and you know, help them see their own light and find their own way. That's all I, I, I enjoy at this moment in my life. And getting rid of uh, all of my belongings has been oh, one of the best feelings. <laughs> oh, it's been amazing. And it's addicting to see you know, how, how minimalist you can go what you really need for this creature of, of, of my body, how, how best I can care for it without surrounding myself with things. And this is a phase in my life. I, 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 I don't know if it's a permanent change and I don't judge anyone who, you know, it has things. I lived that way in a period of my life, but this is what feels right to me right now. I found this year with uh, you know visiting friends in Calgary and with the time I spent in the hospital and the time I spent out in nature you know I slept out here a number of times you know I, don't, I really don't need a lot I am a, a creature of this earth in my life I've lived in a simple one-room cabin in the foothills with just a wood-burning stove, a desk, and a cot to sleep on. I've taken a nap in a tire rut from a logging truck left in the ground from years ago on old mountain roads that have been long forgotten. And I have you know, rested on beds of moss on mountaintops only reached by helicopter that, you know, in, in glades that have probably never even been seen by human eyes before. And you wake up, you know, the moss is so soft and relaxing, and you get up and then your whole back is soaking wet. I spent a week in winter in a lean-to with nothing more than a good friend and whatever we could carry in on our backs. And I just, I love experiencing what I am capable of and how much adventure I can bring into my life. It makes me feel alive. And in my old life, I felt very numb and I felt very trapped. And when I thought about getting a place in the city, even in Canmore, there's a, a mountain town, you know, just west of the big city of Calgary. I thought, okay, let me go live in Canmore, but the thought of going back to living in an apartment in a well-populated area, it made me feel that feeling again. And I knew I, I I, I, I can't do that right now. I, I'm not. I'm not ready for that step. So I thought, you know, maybe I'll go traveling. It's getting cold, and I like the cold out here. I love. I love it for the snow. But we're not even getting snow this year. So I thought, you know, maybe I'll just go traveling. But I grew up in a small city here in uh, Canada, Alberta, Canada, and you know, I spent summers on a cattle ranch growing up. I have seen a lot of the world, but I'm kind of a small town type person at heart. And I like Canada, I like the foothills and the mountains. So I'm, I'm, my, my plan is to stick around here for now. I have outfitted, well, I have actually spent thousands of dollars on customizations um, and upgrades to my vehicle. I have uh, a large SUV so that I can live out of it and I'm going to take it on the road and I'm going to be in and around Canmore and Banff and Calgary 
And this is an experiment for me. If I like this, then I would look into getting a camper van, you know, something a little more Instagram worthy. Uh, my vehicle, it looks just like a, a well-kept normal vehicle with deeply tinted windows. And so, yeah, it's an experiment and I've decided, you know, if I don't like it, I will stay at a hotel in town for the next couple of months or I'll go to a resort somewhere. I know whatever happens, I'll figure it out. But I am really excited to be on this leg of my journey, to have this kind of freedom and autonomy in my life where I, that I never had before, that I didn't know was possible. Now I know there are so many of you out there who are going through some really challenging things in your life. A lot of you feel trapped and limited in some way in your life. Maybe it's by your past. Maybe it's your family holding you back in one way or another. Your finances, a relationship that you're in. I suppose what I want you to know is that you don't have to make daring and extreme choices in your life to get results. There are little things you can do day by day that help liberate you and that start to lead you on the path to your destiny. And I hope to share more of those on my channel as time goes on. I'm going to be creating a lot of videos. That's another thing I'm focusing on in the next little while. Your hope and your dreams and your stories, they inspire me and give me strength. We're all a part of something bigger and we're all in this together. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.